This will be a two-part Grande Pacific production on the flat irons of the Grande Pacific. So, after many battles with the computer, programs, drivers, files, routers, modems, and all the like, we have decided back to work on the on the scenery on the railroad. Um, the other stuff will just have to take care of itself. So we have gone into construction of some tunnels up here on the upper level of the railroad. Just a little perspective shot here. Uh, Rock Ridge is below. This is the famous town of Salamosa here where the uh, standard gauge interchanges with the narrow gauge. And of course, we come through the tunnel and uh, basically the narrow gauge starts on the other side and goes down into the tunnel down there. Uh, so we decided to get us some, this is a very long section in here. This is almost, well, it is 40 something feet along the top wall and I mean, we need to break things up lesson in scenery. Uh, the fascias here create a lot of straight lines. So that's an argument or discussion. I don't want to make an argument. Discussion for uh, fascias that go in and out and have curved lines on them uh, creates more of, I guess, uh, illusion of being a cut of the actual scenery. Whereas you get into straight lines, as we kind of learn in this business of model train scenery, uh, there ain't many straight lines and Mother Nature just doesn't have straight lines. So, uh, pros and cons there of your fascia, but uh, I didn't want a big fascia, particularly when we got to the second level, so this was the choice. Uh, I only will say that I wish I had picked, just gone ahead and used masonite, because when I started this project five years ago, these uh, this is nothing more than four and a half inch uh, fascia board, uh, I mean, uh, wall, uh, baseboard. So it gets to be an issue in cost now. So, but when you're as far along as I am, you have no choice but to finish. And I think I need seven or eight more 20 foot pieces to finish. So we've gotten out the old foam. And I guess the biggest story here, and I had done this a little bit before with just the foam. We, uh, neighbor, and I'd seen some videos, but neighbor across the street mentioned to me after he took down a big foam uh, background drop they had used at their church for a year of a castle. And it was very well done. He says, yeah, well, I got all these hot knives and stuff. And I says, oh boy, let me get a hold of those. So he had some, these are very, by the way, I found out this one is in the $200 plus range. And he's got a couple more that I borrowed. I had the hot wire. That one was mine. And there's one other one. Now they come with some varying attachments with make a curve hook cutting knife and so forth. So, since it was time to get some scenery done, we're taking a little bit different approach. In this picture, you can see right around the bottom here, there's some Calco 127. I did a three-part series on Calco 127. And up that crack, and up in the back back there to fill in, to fill in uh, spaces and holes. And there's some around this tunnel opening here to kind of fill in where the styrofoam doesn't, you know, when you cut it, it doesn't all quite fit exactly together. Um, we did paint the inside. As you can see, everything inside the tunnel was painted black. And we did need a block. And I'm gonna, I've already figured a way to go in there and put a block so when you look in this tunnel hole, you can't look out the tunnel hole on the upper side on the other level. So... It needs to be a block in there to cut that off. Uh, but that's, you know, live and learn. This scene right here, and I stopped and put some paint on it. 
my famous brown and then mix some white and let it dry overnight and I came back and highlighted was all done with this tool. Uh, I will eventually make this into a how-to video and you'll see a couple still shots attached with this where what we did was took blocks, put them up there, glued it in place, let them dry overnight then once it was steadfast then we went back and carved it. Uh, basically the blocks were made out of uh, some other material. Wait a minute. The blocks were made out of some foam like this. Uh, these were pieces I salvaged. They were actually used to make a design on a building. But uh, they were salvaged from somewhere else. So I've already cut one of them up. But you cut a piece up, put it in place, get a good flat bottom, let the glue dry, and then, then you can do anything you want to it. Remember what I talked about in some of the other videos where I mentioned was about styrofoam. Uh, thanks to the lady down the street who bought all the nice new furniture. As I rode down from my daughter's house, it was around the corner, I noticed all these boxes with all this white foam in it. Can't pass these opportunities up, people. It's free, so it's available. You never have to pay for it. Uh, look around. There's plenty of foam. This is just another example of a way to get it. Uh, left it in the car. I haven't been picking at it before and finishing this product before I go store it away, whatever's left. So, with the use of the hot knife, all we did was cover, carve up the foam, create the illusions. Uh, whether this works out 100% with everybody agrees, but the attempt here is uh, a section in Colorado where the where it's uh, basically called the flat irons, where the rocks were pushed up in the strata, and uh, it's uh, it's the Rio Grande did pass through it, uh, but it is part of the topography of Colorado. So we try to create some different looking uh, scenery here. A uh, long way to go on this. Uh, I need to go put the uh, sky in. <laughs> not my fun job, but it'll have to be done here soon. Because we do not want to get too far along here. It's bad enough we have to cover up all the track to paint up here. But uh, we don't want to get too far ahead on this with trees and stuff in the way uh, without painting the uh, sky in. Uh, when I say paint the sky in, I'll just pan over here. And the sky here is not difficult. Uh, it's a matter of uh, getting wet blue paint on there and then, then uh, uh, making it lighter as it gets to the top of the mountains. Uh, the scenery over here is going to change a little bit uh, in the background because I have some pictures I'm working off of. All this, you can get all the pictures you want off the internet. There was a website called Rocky Mountains, and believe me, it's got thousands of pictures, all, and pictures of these exact things. I may include just one shot in the uh, thing when I do the article on it, of what I kind of use as a guideline. Pictures are great for things. It gives you inspiration and ideas to get things done. You may not end up with it coming out looking exactly the same, but it, all we're trying to do here is convey an idea and have it look representative, unique. So anyway, moving ahead, we'll get some more work done on this and take some more video and eventually we'll post it. So when you get this video, you'll think it was all done at once. Uh, this is a right now into about the eighth day of this project. A lot of stuff. You have to do it and let it dry. The base to build the mountain on, just to build the box, that was a day and you had to wait for it to dry overnight. Because uh, you can't do anything with the foam will come apart. And we don't get into reinforcing all this stuff. I mean, it's 
believe me, there's not a whole lot here. It's just strictly here to support styrofoam. We don't plan on holding any dancers on top of this. So back on our uh, flat irons region of uh, Colorado, we've uh, somewhat finished this up as far as the foam and most of the coloring. Uh, we got to do the weeds part. We got to do the ballasting on the track. Uh, a lot more trees up the middle, a lot more trees in the front. But as far as creating the rock and the scene, we're pretty much finished with that aspect. We did get the paintbrush and the blue paint out and did some work on the sky. And of course, I guess this is another point that I could make about buying paint when you're dealing with this size of a layout and you have these kind of walls to deal with you come back and you end up with hmm, I had to go buy another gallon of paint and it ain't exactly the same shade so we're gonna have to do a little feathering on the edges here or particularly the top one to create it and my wife made a few other suggestions which we're gonna take a little bit of the white clouds up but up halfway up the wall out uh, the bottom, she said, looked good, but, you know, a little too much cloudy up at the top. So, anyway, uh, things are looking good otherwise. And you can see just by looking at this shot right here that y you get a much more, a, a better effect than just having, you know, uh, the good old plain blue wall. Uh, little bit of clouds in the air thing and that's nothing more than we put the blue paint on wet it's a little messy because you got to make it wet uh, and uh, with a big brush and then we take a, another brush and put some white on it and just blend it in uh, stratus clouds a little bit more on this side but that's all you have to do now what we'll do in the middle here is of course between the rock formations we'll have some more trees and put in a little bit of weeds and so forth and then we have to figure out how we're going to paint in and put in the rest of this down here connect the two put the bridge in and all of that good stuff so but this is what you have to do to do a scene uh, we got part of it now we'll move forward and now I guess the next thing I need to do is get a little demo of cutting, uh, carving up the styrofoam so you can see that actual procedure that was done here. I also want to talk about trees. Might have mentioned a little bit here, but because several days ago I shot the first part of this. This is a bottle brush tree uh, in the trunk may be too long not someone else made this uh, and uh, that's a balsa wood uh, trunk put on it maybe get cut down don't know we just we got some different size bottle brush trees from this individual because we weren't too happy with what we had and these trees definitely look a lot better uh, the brushes were cut and then uh, foam was applied and they're gonna look better so now I'm gonna have to go in the tree making business when uh, we'll kind of keep you up on that as we go along but need some big tree when you have large pieces of scenery you know it's do want some big trees out in front and this is a good point right here just that little bit of distance the big tree up in the front the little tree and the trees get smaller as we go back or given distance in the shot and what you see good old Bob Ross the big tree always in the front so that's what we're working on on trees got another one sitting up here uh, the Lone Ranger that was not quite as big as this one but that's further away so we just stuck that one in the piece of foam up there it'll end up somewhere 
Don't know where yet. Now, some of my favorite parts of this hobby are these little trains. Here we have the K27, and this is HON3 from Sound Trucks. They don't get much better than this. Alright, today we're going to get into a demonstration of how this hot knife made all of this neat little scenery here and uh, demonstrate its use. Uh, we've made up a couple of pieces of styrofoam to continue on the process. Uh, we're going to be changing things a little bit as we go. The uh, flat iron section will come to an end and we'll go over to a different approach. We also have to think about how what we're going to paint on that wall back there. To tie all this thing in and then we're going to have a scene here with this bridge where uh, we have a crossing that comes under here and then all road. So got a couple of things we're going to have to figure out but we're going to start by finish cutting this we're going to cut this. Now this is two inch bee board, as it be called, white foam. Uh, this was scraps found by somebody from somewhere else. And we're going to start working it out. Okay. Alright, so this is cutting the foam. And this is the hot knife. Uh, as I said previously, I mentioned that this is in the part of the pictures. This is uh, something you have to buy. Uh, they're sold on the uh, internet. You can look it up. But uh, you're looking at about a $250 piece of equipment. You may be able to find it cheaper and you can see it's, I got my finger on the tree trigger and uh, some of the leftover remains from the previous cuts is smoke. It's hot. So we've made up this piece as I shot in the previous thing and we're going to cut this piece off here to match things. Now, if you don't want things to be rigid, so just touch it and it kind of makes the uh, marks in the foam. So you can gouge it out or cut it out. Now, in this case, we want to cut it back a little bit deeper. And up at the top, we really want it to disappear when this piece could this would be flat up against that wall so we kind of want we don't want an edge showing a thing now this particular piece of foam had a hole in the middle of it and then you could see where it was cut off of right here it was that was a piece of scrap so the piece of the hole in the middle is not a problem we'll take care of it uh, so you just keep making your cuts as you want to do it now the, I'm going to tell you this is strictly your creativity however you want to cut it now whatever turns you on to make it look like you think mother nature would have had it uh, so, so we can bust up all kind of shapes and figures I'm going to get that other end just turn it around and because the blade isn't that long and you've got it going. Now, so we keep working on this so things weren't straight on the edge so we cut a little bit out 
And then we'll cut a little more out here to create things. Nice. Remember, as much as possible, Mother Nature doesn't have any straight lines, so uh, you want to do that. Now, what I'm doing here is just kind of thinking. We're going to have to transition, but this is how you cut it. It's just that simple. All right. The flat irons are going to come to an end here shortly, and we're going to have to transition those. But that's basically carving the foam with the hot knife. It is very simple to do. And uh, you don't have to do anything more, and we'll show you this, but put paint on this. This is the end of the flat iron section of the Grande Pacific Part 1. Please move to Part 2 for the continuation on this total project.